Among the most immediately recognisable diesel multiple units at work on the UK rail network, the Class 158 and Class 159, apart from their distinctive shape, have been the backbone of nearly all major train operators since they first appeared in the late 1980s. With a top speed of 90 miles an hour, a superbly spacious interior, and fantastic levels of reliability, the class has demonstrated time and again that they can provide simple but comfortable traction on both Britain's most and least used railways. The origin of the Class 158 is owed largely to the formation of the regional railway sector of British Rail in 1982. In order to create a more unified rail network, as opposed to the previous region system, whereby the management of passenger and freight operations fell under the auspices of separate geographical parts of the network, British Rail made the decision in the early 1980s to break their system up into company sectors. The passenger sectors which resulted were Intercity for express services, Network South East for London commuter services, and Regional Railways for regional services. What regional railways inherited could barely be called a system, as by far the biggest victim of the large-scale downsizing of the UK rail network were the rural and regional routes. Aside from the fact that the rural routes were near constantly running at a severe loss, the stock and track work that they were left to handle had been allowed to deteriorate for decades. Trains especially were very poor, their fleet consisting of decrepit and dusty first-generation DMUs and loco halt stock dating back to the late 1950s and early 1960s. This was compounded by the fact that much of this stock was filled to the brim with asbestos, therefore, aside from being old and tired, they were also downright toxic. Something had to be done. Therefore, regional railways took steps to replace the ageing stock with brand new vehicles to not only improve service reliability, but also help to encourage increased passenger use. The company's first priority was for branch lines and regional routes with low ridership numbers, the fruits of their labour being the poorly built and severely flawed pacer units, which was meant to be an interim measure before more permanent designs were introduced. In 1985, the pacers were superseded by the first round of sprinter units, specifically the original Class 150s. The Class 150 was able to satisfy a dual role in that it could work both rural branch lines but also on high capacity routes between the major cities outside London. The success of the Class 150 at reinvigorating demand on the regional railways network spurred on development of improved classes of sprinter family, primarily moving towards the creation of a unit that was more suited for long distance trains across rural regions such as the Settle and Carlisle or the Trans Pennine service. While the Class 155 and 156 of the late 1980s were designed to satisfy the long distance market, their internal refinement and top speeds weren't enough to make them truly suitable for intercity trains. The result was that these units would more often than not be used for extra capacity on major commuter corridors such as between Liverpool, Manchester and Leeds. What was needed was a dedicated long-distance multiple unit with an intercity-style interior and level of comfort, akin to the loco-hauled operations that currently held sway. Thus, the Class 158 project was born, which essentially took the previous Class 156 design and modified it comprehensively in order to create a unit that provided levels of comfort and speed that were comparable to the loco-hauled trains it planned to replace. In terms of mechanics, the Class 158 and Class 156 are generally the same, using slightly different variants of the Cummins NTA 855 turbocharged diesel engine, with the 158 rated at 400 horsepower, while the 156 is rated at 570 horsepower. Internally, however, is where the Class 158 truly carves out a niche for itself against the other sprinter classes. Unlike the 156, the main cabin area was sealed off from the vestibules by automatic sliding doors to reduce noise, while the seating upholstery, full interior carpets and panoramic windows helped to give passengers the true feel of a modern intercity train. The biggest difference against the other sprinters, though, was the fitting of an advanced air conditioning system. The AC system on the 158 was initially tested on one of the two original Class 150 three-car prototypes, 15002, which was redesignated to Class 154 while equipment destined for the Class 158 was evaluated. The carriage of the Class 158 also featured a modern lavatory and also came with a novel onboard payphone. 
Food services consisted of a trolley with drinks and light refreshments, which was seen as something of a downgrade from the full buffet that had previously been present on older generations of stock. Where the Class 158 really came into its own over its predecessors was with speed, comfort and noise levels. The top speed of the class was 90 miles an hour, and with two undercarriage engines driving the unit, acceleration was phenomenally quicker than the outgoing Class 31s, 37s and 47s. Padding in the carriages helped to reduce the noise of both the track and the engines, meaning that, unlike on other sprinter units, passengers could enjoy a more peaceful ride. The average range of a Class 158 is 1600 miles between fuel stops, and the reliability of these units is reflected in that they're expected to travel up to 13,500 miles between major services, a massive improvement over the older diesel locomotives that could only manage between 5,000 and 8,000 miles. Class 158s were designed and built by British Rail Engineering Limited at their Litchurch Lane Works in Derby. And, after the first units entered testing in mid-1989, the class was introduced with ScotRail in September 1990, replacing older Class 47s with push-pull stock on trunk routes between Edinburgh Waverley and Glasgow Queen Street. The loco hauled stock, which made use of Mark II coaches converted into cab cars, known as driving brake standard opens, was transferred south to work with Class 86s on the newly electrified Great Eastern Main Line between London Liverpool Street, Colchester, Ipswich and Norwich. Once 158s had seen their initial introduction on the trunk services, they were phased in on longer distance routes between Edinburgh and Glasgow to Aberdeen and Inverness, their panoramic windows, improved acceleration and superb levels of comfort making them an instant hit with the travelling public. By mid-1991, passenger numbers had increased substantially in Scotland as Class 158 saw further introduction on mainline routes between the nation's major centres. Next saw the introduction of Class 158 to the Midlands, where these units replaced Class 31s and loco hauled stock on long-distance services out of Birmingham New Street, both west towards Shrewsbury and central Wales, but also north towards Chester, Holyhead, Liverpool and Manchester, as well as east towards Leicester, Peterborough, Nottingham and Cambridge. This was followed by the north of England, where 158s took over on Transpennine Express services between Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, York and Hull, as well as occupying a high-capacity role on the West Yorkshire metro services around Leeds and Sheffield. In Wales, the class was introduced on mainline services between the south and north of the country, working the central Wales line between Swansea, Cardiff and Newport, up through Hereford, Ludlow and Shrewsbury, to Chester, Llandudno and Holyhead as well as west to Aberyst with them Pohwelly. Finally came the southwest of England, where 158 started work under the Alpha Line brand, a high-end passenger operation run by regional railways which was introduced specifically for the Class 158s. Alpha Line differentiated itself from the regular regional railways operations by promoting intercity-style interiors and long-distance trains between Cornwall, Devon, Bristol, South Wales and the West Midlands. One 158 service operated by Alpha Line was the eight-hour Penzance to Manchester Piccadilly service via Hereford and Crewe, while another service ran from Cardiff Central to London Waterloo. In addition to the units operated by regional railways, a small batch of four units fell under the auspices of Intercity, working on lightly trafficked cross-country routes between Liverpool, Manchester and Scotland, as well as on services between Portsmouth and Bristol or Swindon and Birmingham. These units also appeared regularly on midday off-peak workings between Birmingham and Manchester, and also on Sunday mornings between Birmingham and Doncaster, usually in lieu of loco hauled stock or a HST set. It was in this capacity that the Class 158 project spawned the further Class 159. In 1991, following a major recession caused by the Gulf War, Passenger numbers on the railways began to falter as fares were raised to cover the increasing cost of fuel. As such, demand for the extensive order of Class 158s was nearly halved, leaving 22 sets destined for the West Yorkshire Metro services spare. These units were distinguishable as they came in a three-car formation with a non-driving centre trailer, a requirement for extra capacity on the busy commuter routes out of Leeds. Therefore, in order to avoid these sets becoming obsolete, 
British Rail decided to put them to work elsewhere, and no other line could have benefited more from new stock than the South West Main Line between London Waterloo, Salisbury and Exeter. The South West Main Line, once the pride and joy of the Southern Railway and a major archery for holidaymakers travelling between London and the seaside resorts of Devon and Cornwall, had been stripped bare since the 1960s, being threatened with closure on several occasions. While the line survived the beaching acts and other proposals to close it, what service that existed on the route was essentially a token operation hauled by decrepit, dusty and severely unreliable stock. By 1991, Network South East employed an increasingly tired fleet of Class 50s and Mark II coaches to work the top expresses between London and the South West, these locomotives being prone to frequent breakdowns. Attempts to replace the 50s with modified Class 47s only served to compound the problem, as the constant stop-start nature of the line caused trouble on their mechanics. Initially, Network South East had proposed a variant of their upcoming networker family known as the Class 171, essentially an intercity version of the Class 165 units working out of London Paddington. In addition, further proposals included the introduction of five-car HST sets and electrification of the route for use by Class 442 Wessex Electrics. However, while the downturn in the economy brought a halt to some of British Rail's more expensive and ambitious plans, the surplus of 22 three-car Class 158s did present them with a cheaper alternative. Therefore, these redundant 158s were taken to Babcock Rail's works in Rosyth, Scotland, where they were extensively modified for use as intercity trains on this primary route. This included the fitting of a first-class section, retention toilets, and various other amendments, although the required modifications only came about due to an argument between Network South East and the newly privatised BREL to agree terms on the variation order to NSC specification. The first of the class 159s, 159004, was officially handed over to Network South East on January 6, 1993 at Forsyth. The 159s formed part of a £46 million improvement scheme for the South West Main Line, including the creation of an advanced train care centre at Salisbury designed specifically to accommodate these units. Platforms at various stations were also lengthened, and the general aesthetic of the line was improved to reflect that this new service was to be truly different from what had come before. 159 testing began on February 22, 1993, wherein 159004 ran a through train from London Waterloo to Exeter St David's and back. On March 2, the same unit made the first revenue earning service as a relief train between London Waterloo and Salisbury, ushering in a new era of traction on the South West Main Line. This was followed on July 12 by the introduction of the new timetable, in which Class 159 diagrams demonstrated massive reductions in journey times over the archaic loco hauled trains. Two days earlier, the last through loco hauled service had been operated, bringing an end to the Class 50s on the Southwest Main Line. This legendary class would stumble on in BR service for another year, working rail tours, before eventually meeting their final withdrawal in March 1994. Overall, 182 Class 158 sets were constructed by the time production ended in 1992, 165 sets being two-car, while 17 were three-car, as well as 22 Class 159s. By the time the privatisation of British Rail officially commenced in 1994, these units had largely displaced loco hauled trains across the entire UK network, complemented by both earlier sprinter units and the newer networker units. In addition to the UK network, the Class 158 is one of the few modern British train designs to see success on the export market. Between 1990 and 1991, the State Railway of Thailand took an interest in purchasing new units for intercity trains working out of Bangkok, and became enthused by the success of the Class 158s. As such, BREL put together six three-car units that were specifically built for work in Thailand differing from the UK units by having a metre gauge, the removal of outer end gangways, manually operated inward opening hinged doors instead of automatic plug doors, reversible seating and additional air conditioning. Thai units were originally delivered in a variant of the Regional Railways Express livery, but this was removed in 2011 following a major refurbishment of the class. 
The refurbishment also included lengthening of some units to four cars by doubling up centre trailers, leaving several driving trailers redundant. Upon privatisation, the sectors of British Rail were divided into individual franchises that could be bid for by private organisations, spreading the Class 158 and 159 fleets across multiple train operators. Class 158s were split between ScotRail, Wales and West, which also inherited the Alpha Line brand, Central Trains and Northern Spirit, which inherited the Trans Pennine operations, while Class 159s were all taken up by Southwest Trains. Furthermore, the four X Intercity Class 158s were taken over by Virgin Cross Country on their previously diagrammed services between the northwest of England and Scotland, as well as between Swindon and Birmingham. Since privatisation, the 158 and 159 fleets have been chopped and changed as new stock has been introduced or the boundaries of individual franchises have been revised. In Scotland, Class 158s held sway on trunk routes between the nation's major cities until the introduction of Class 170 Turbo Stars in the early 2000s. After this, while some members of the class continued to see work on trunk routes, most were relegated to branch lines in the far north of the Highlands, replacing Class 150s and 156s on trains between Inverness and Wick slash Thurso and the Carl of Locache. The Class 158s have largely maintained their fleet numbers in Scotland to help supplement the 170s, but with the electrification being undertaken by Transport Scotland on many of the trunk routes, replacing both 170s and 158s with electric units like the Class 385, the numbers are expected to be reduced from 2020 onward. On services work between Edinburgh, Glasgow and Inverness, these have been replaced by redundant Class 43 HST sets inherited from Great Western Railway. In Wales, the fleet continues to maintain a strong presence as the backbone of both trunk routes and lower capacity branch lines. While the disbanding of the Alpha Line marks saw Welsh 158 operations into southern England largely curtailed, and with the Class 175 Caradia units replacing them on mainline services between North and South Wales, as well as trains to Manchester, the 158s remain on the busy Birmingham International to Shrewsbury, Lundudno, Holyhead, Aberystwyth and Pafwelly trains. In the Midlands, the class formed a major part of Central Trains long distance or high capacity services around Birmingham until the franchise was broken up in 2007. The resulting split of the Midlands franchise between London Midland and East Midlands trains saw all 158 units in this area inherited by the latter. East Midlands trains put their 158s to work on some of the longest and busiest routes in the UK including the seven-hour service between Liverpool in northwest England to Norwich in East Anglia. This service was, initially, controversial, as the Department for Transport specified that East Midlands trains could only run two cars on this extremely busy service, leading to severe overcrowding and, in many cases, passengers being left behind. The Department for Transport eventually admitted their mistake and, after taking on several extra 158 units from First Great Western, the Norwich to Liverpool trains were extended to four cars from December 2011. In the southwest of England, the presence of the Class 158s has been subject to both reductions and increases. Upon the formation of the Greater Western franchise in 2006, which merged the Intercity Great Western franchise with the Thames Valley and South West franchises, all 158s in this region fell into the hands of First Great Western. However, in order to extend the units to improve capacity on the busy Cardiff Central to Portsmouth Harbour service, the fleet underwent something of an overhaul that reduced their patents elsewhere in the franchise. Firstly, the company swapped many of its 158s with those working for Transpanon Express so that all units in their fleet belonged to the leasing company Porterbrook for ease of management. After this, many two-car sets were split in order to extend others to three coaches. The result was an improvement to trains on the arterial Portsmouth to Cardiff service, but the removal of 158s on express services to Plymouth and Penzance, which were largely replaced by Class 150s and 153s. However, as electrification and new trains are introduced in the Thames Valley area, surplus Class 165s and 166s have been moved into the Bristol region allowing Class 158s to be reallocated back onto services towards the southwest of England. Finally, in Northern England, 
this area has probably seen the largest change in Class 158 usage. In 2004, the original Northern Spirit franchise, renamed Arriva Trains Northern, was split into two new franchises, the Northern Rail franchise and the Transpennine Express franchise. The introduction of the Transpennine Express franchise was to streamline these intercity operations away from the regular Northern franchise, and thereby form a dedicated express service. As part of the franchise commitments of First Group and Keolis, who had been awarded the franchise as a joint venture, a new fleet of dedicated Transpennine Express units would be introduced, the result being the Class 185s built by Siemens of Germany. These units, which form part of the De Zero family, brought an end to the Class 158s on the Transpennine Express route in 2006, with the ex-Transpennine fleet being transferred south to Central Trains, Southwest Trains, Northern Rail and First Great Western. Of note were the units transferred to Southwest Trains, which comprised eight of the 17 three-car 158s. These units were subsequently refurbished at Doncaster Works and entered traffic with Southwest Trains as Class 159-1s. This was also supplemented by the addition of another 10 two-car Class 158s used to replace the troublesome Class 170 Turbo Star units on trains out of London Waterloo. For those 158s still at work on the Northern franchise, these have largely remained on the same diagrams they've done since regional railways, operating mainline services between Manchester, Leeds, York, Sheffield and Hull, while also working more rural trains along the Settle and Carlisle and the Blackpool to York service via Halifax and Bradford. For the Class 159s, aside from the increase in their fleet by 8 units in 2006, the fleet has remained more or less the same ever since it was established by Network South East. While Southwest Trains, and later Southwestern Railway, operations no longer travel south of Exeter to Plymouth and Paynton, these units still provide a major part of the service across southern England. Overall, the Class 158s and 159s were the trains that saved regional railways by providing comfortable, reliable and efficient services for those travelling on the network's quieter railways. These trains very much set the standard for how future long-distance units could integrate intercity-style comfort with acceleration and speed that far exceeded the older loco-hauled stock, finally providing passengers in rural areas a service that was modern, efficient and capable for the 21st century. Thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, why not leave a like, and be sure to subscribe for more great content. Thank you very much, take care, and I'll see you next time.